Good afternoon. Welcome to Finding Happiness in Hard Times. My name is Ken Burtness, and I'm coming to you from Holly Eva out at the North Shore. And today we're taping this show on Valentine's Day. So you can probably guess that we're going to be talking about love today. In fact, the title of the episode is called Love and Marriage. And to help me with that are my two really good friends and also the lovingest couple that I know of, Daniel Lev and Margie Walkover. Welcome to the show, guys. Hi. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I always ran into uh, when I was counseling, doing marriage and family counseling, was sometimes people got married and partnered up uh, before they really knew each other. So I thought that that might be a good place to start today. Uh, I'm, so I'm going to start with asking Margie and Daniel how they met, got to know each other, and how they decided among themselves that, hey, we're going to make a great couple. It's over to you guys. All righty. Well, um, we kind of talked about how we would present it. So I'm going to tell uh, a, a shortened version of the story. Um, I was getting close to 50 and just giving up on meeting a soulmate and had gone through a divorce. So I was just, you know, living life as best I could. As I went to a wedding that was in a backyard and a friend of mine, um, a rabbi, and he, he's a rabbi, he was facilitating. And I'm just walking around before the wedding starts. And there was a a garden, a terrace garden in the back with steps. So I, I went up the steps just to take a look at it. And there was a bench there that the, the couple had put so they could look over their house at the bay. And and who was standing there but this beautiful woman in a, an Indian outfit, the Halmar Shamis or whatever it's called. And um, she turned around and, and, and we started talking. I mean, she was setting it up for the couple. After the wedding's over, the couple goes to a private place. And that's where... Uh, she was setting up. Anyways, we just kind of hit it off. It was nice. Then somebody came by and said, uh, Margie, we need you at the door to greet people. And Margie, you know, interrupt me if I miss something. And so we went down there, continued our conversation. And long story short is I just kept um, stalking her throughout the party. I kept looking for her when we were apart and we talked a little. And by the end of the party, we kind of closed it down. It was just us and a couple people and exchanged numbers and, and went out. And then that's how we met. Well, I have to say that I've, I've known Daniel. Daniel was a, quite a figure in the community, and I knew him, and I always thought he was a pretty cool guy, but he was always going out with other people. So um, when I saw that he was at the wedding, I thought, okay, because I was getting some helping to set up the wedding, and when he walked into this space, I thought, hey, this is great. So we talked, I had a really good time, and actually, I was the one who said, my next job is to go, you know, be the greeter at the front door. <laughs> and so I brought him with me, and... Um, and it was really had a really great conversation as I was greeting people and bringing them in. I talked to him about all kinds of things, and I was thinking, this is really fun. And then again, as the wedding went on, we kept on kind of like noticing each other from across the wedding. And um, it was just it was really great. Um, and I was thinking, oh, this is an interesting guy. I wonder what's going to happen. And it was on the 24th of May, 2003. And uh, two things we would fall at the feet of the couple who invited us to the wedding because we so appreciated them bringing us together. And uh, kiss their feet. <laughs> just kiss their feet and say, thank you so much. But I would, and Margie would at times, uh, at the 24th of every month would be like an anniversary. And, and our real anniversary, together. I'm oh. sorry, the real anniversary is when we met, as far as I'm concerned. Yes. You would kind of really met each other with a capital M. That's the best way I can put it. Because you don't know the person when you first meet them, but... There was a depth of meaning and curiosity and openness and joy that immediately happened. But, you know, it takes time. It takes time. So uh, maybe a, a month or so after that, getting to know her, spending time, I, you know, I was, I was sure, but I wasn't sure. And then she was doing something that kind of bothered me. And yeah. I had a history with certain women that if I would tell them something that bothered me, they would, like, kill me. And so <laughs> I... I decided, I uh, wrote in a journal and said, I'm going to present this to her. And we sat on the front porch of the house she was living in. And I was practically trembling. I said, by the way, this is going on. This really bothers me. I'm getting ready for the hand. And she said, I'm so sorry, you know. Oh, no, no. Well, let, let's see, you know, we can do it differently. And then I absolutely knew that um, this was the kind of person I wanted to be together with, who was actually very reasonable in conversations, even when we have differences. Right. And so the ways why I, I kind of fell for Daniels, because he's amazing for me. I mean, he's 
a musician and a storyteller and he's spiritual and he's a psychologist. Um, so he understands people and he understands emotional geographies from a place of big heartedness and strength. Um, and he's tall and gorgeous. And I just, I just love everything. I was curious about everything about him. Um, and so two weeks, I was really happy I met this guy. So, but, but two weeks into the relationship, my mother died. And she was the last person of my, to die in my family. I was 45, so I'd lost everybody. And I looked at Daniel and I said, you know, dating, we're not going to date anymore because my life just fell apart. And what happened, and I think this was really telling, is that we met, we met a second time then. We met in a way where it was very real, very raw, and very authentic. And Daniel offered me space for, to be in, as a person who was grieving and a space to heal that changed my life. And it was so profound that I was thinking, you know, the angels in heaven must have sent him to me. I mean, how else could this have happened? So my thought is that what I would do is I would, once I kind of started to get through this event, I would give back to him the love that he gave me. And then he would go off and find the love of his life. That would be my present back to him, you know, to show him how beautiful he was. Because clearly- And I did. I found the love of my life. <laughs> that's kind of our story it's kind of been like that ever since in terms of seeing each other and offering spaces for us to love to to, to really be with each other from a state of love and joy even when things are tough we just enjoy each other well you know you you got me right to the question i was going to ask because that's one of the things that uh, couples have trouble with a lot is support and yeah. the problem with support is we're so understanding of the support we're giving, but we don't see the support sometimes that the other person is giving to us. It's what I call the 60-40 rule. No matter how even the support is, you're going to think to yourself, well, I'm giving most of the, what's happening. I'm giving 60% and they're only giving 40, when clearly it could be 50-50. And that's what you're telling me is that with you, it was clear that both of you were supporting each other. And uh, in equal amounts and with equal amount of love. Uh, and that really is amazing. Um, yeah, if you could, uh, since I had that as a question, maybe you could give me in some other examples of how you guys support each other. Because I know you do because you're in different fields and uh, you need to sort of cross over those fields to support each other. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. The psychology and the sociologist. I, I, sorry, I just want, yeah, you think, hey, how can we get along? But uh, I just want to say one thing about support, which is the times that I've supported Margie were very supportive of me, that I felt very much I had uh, a person who I can really care for and take care of when she needed it, and she accepted it. That's huge. Uh, and so, anyways, um, well, I'll start the story of uh, a, a big support. Uh, one thing that happened recently, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, is um, we came home and I was in the kitchen doing something and I heard a blood curdling scream come out of Margie's office. And I, and I ran over there, she called me and I ran over there and she had fallen down, and landed on her arm. You wanna continue, baby? Oh, well, I fractured my, I fractured my shoulder in several places, which I'd never broken a bone. And it was um, a bit crazy. So basically what that started was, you know, it's interesting because I was the one that was in trouble, but because we, it's a we, we're together. It was really, in a way, it was about both of us. And so Daniel was amazing in providing and working with me to figure out what to do to get the kind of help I needed and get me to the emergency room. And um, it took, I lost the full, I lost the, the, the use of this arm and this hand for 10 months. I was in a huge amount of pain. Um, and it, I needed to figure out step-by-step step what to do to do the self-healing and find providers that were great. And so the deal was, was that, that Daniel was, Daniel basically took over our household. He did all the dishes. He dressed me in the morning. He brushed my hair, which is actually, what we ended up doing is that even though this is a tragic thing that happened, we created a space of love and discovery around it because I found out things about him I didn't know. He found out things about me he didn't know. And then I also, he got to be close to my hair. Daniel has alopecia, he just lost his hair. And so, and I grew my hair out too. 
So we have, so we were able to to discover through this this difficult situation, we were still be able to discover um, qualities that we had and 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 things that we both loved to do that were new because we were doing things completely differently. And so that was that was one way that that he was supporting me, but we were, I was also supporting him and thanking him for being so fabulous and um, and wonderful and giving him even extra extra love and uh, appreciation. <laughs> Just like I said, uh, I really appreciated being able to help you through that, and right. you know, that just helped me. What can I say without sign- sounding to, I don't know what, but uh, I, you ma- you made me a better man. I felt like <laughs> the, the the better version, a better version of me was also arising through that that brief tragedy that we had. That fortunately, through a lot of work that you did, you healed your arm with with uh, right. physical therapists and others. Yeah. Right. Well, the other piece too is that, and this is kind of more typical of our life, is that the way we support each other is. First, we just delight in each other. We have a way of of being able to see the, the joy, the humor, the things that we disagree with and we make jokes about. Um, we are always, because we're, I'm really grateful because Daniel's tall and I'm tall as well. And we basically hug each other a lot. So, so we hug each other all day long. We ask each other how we're doing. Um, we're able to both ask for comfort. We create space for recognizing joy every single day. And it, because it's fun. I mean, we just do it because it's fun. And we um, give each other space when we need our own individual oh, sure. time, for sure. Oh. But I gotta tell you, doing this is so hard for us. We're doing this interview in two different rooms and usually we would love to sit together and, and mm-hmm. get all mushy. So, so just, the, just know that we're a lot mushier than we're, we are right now. The other piece <laughs> is that I'm a classic extrovert. Oh boy. Daniel support Daniel describes himself as a loud introvert. So we're very different temperamentally, but in terms of, of how we our, our, our sensorium, that's what I call it, what we appreciate in the world um, is very similar. We just come at it from a different way, and that's great. Makes life more fun. We're a match. <laughs> more or less. You know, we're always gonna, you know, I was gonna talk about comfort and you've already guys have talked about that a little bit we'll come back to that but you talked about the differences so um and you guys really resolve those differences in a wonderful way um maybe you could tell us a little bit more uh for the audience who is not finding it so easy to deal with their differences tell us a little bit about how you guys actually compromise because you are coming from different positions a lot of times uh, as a help to our audience. So can you tell us a little bit about compromising? You want to start or you want me to? You go ahead. Okay. Well, this is partly what I do when I'm working with couples is I apply it to myself, which <laughs> is when you meet somebody, uh, there's kind of three categories of things uh, having to do with what you have in common. There are things all the way over here that you're absolutely different on, all the way over here you're totally together on, and everything else is kind of uh, in between. And during a relationship, what you're together on is not a problem. You work out the things in between, but it's where you're totally different. And if you're going to be together, you have to accept certain things. And so, for example, one, let's say medium-sized difference is I happen to be uh, more traditionally Jewish in my observances. So certain religious people have certain practices they do in the Jewish world. They affect our daily life, like diet, like what food we have in the house and things like that. Uh, Margie is is different in that respect. She didn't grow up with that or have that, although she was open to some things. So uh, when Passover came, our first Passover, and I talked to her about how you have to clean a house for Passover, uh, it was pretty shocking for her. <laughs> and um, we didn't really have an argument. It was more like, well, let's see how we can do this so you feel and we both can feel okay. And so we just talked it over and figured out what I would do, what she would do toward uh, cleaning the house, getting it ready for the holiday. And um, that was one example of, you know, we really wanted to respect each other's needs around that. Does that sound right, honey? Yeah, actually, I started to cry. I thought, I can't do this. I want to because I love him so much. And and he's a rabbi, you know, and I grew up in a less less traditional household than, than his practice. So I started to cry. And so 
So see, Daniel, who's the one that really wanted this, he said, okay, I see you're upset. I'm going to back off a little bit. You know, let's see what, how Margie, if I give Margie some space, maybe she can come forward a little bit and I'll move back a little bit. And then we'll find a space where she can be more comfortable doing a little bit more of what Daniel would need and a little bit more of what I would need. And so that's kind of the way we did it. But what we, I think what, what that came from was a place of mutual trust and love. Because we, you know, and also the ability to kind of step away from, from certain things, just in that moment, step away from certain things that we need. You know, it's just a conversation. What actually happens is different, but sometimes when you talk it out, you can figure out where the area of compromise is possible. And so we're able to do that easily. We're also grown-ups. That's the other thing. We met when I was 45 and he was 49. We'd already been through divorces that were not fun, that neither of us really wanted. You know, we're good people, didn't hadn't found the right person. So we're kind of, in a way, we were ready to really try and fully be in a relationship. And then, you know, he's so much fun. I mean, how could you not want to be with him? I wanted to say, we I'll sort of talk for you, Margie. You can, of course, correct me. We want to thank our ex-spouses. <laughs> because our ex-spouses showed us what we did not want in a, a <laughs> And helped me grow up. Uh, so that I know how to be with somebody uh, and and go for what I need, but also to be able to be sensitive to them. And our ex-spouses were definitely not like us. No. They, they no. really let us know uh, that we needed somebody like each other. Right, right. So, yeah. Maybe this is a good point to get back to uh, to comfort because you guys are great at giving comfort to each other, of uh, saying, and following up on each other's thoughts and uh, and the ways you guys can come together. So can you tell us a little bit more? I, I know you've got some stories about comfort as well that you could share with us. About how we give each other comfort? Yes. Uh -huh. It's every day, all day, on and off. You know, very rarely do we have like knock down, drag out arguments and they usually resolve fine. But, but uh, just as as is needed you know um to everyone as they need from everyone as they can give it's sort of like that principle and uh and often it's mutual we just uh in between my clients you know because i see them in, in my my office online and then i come out and sometimes i just need a hug you know i just need to say hi and uh we both work at home so i mean that was something for us during the covid is I know of a number of couples had a hard time being in the same house a lot, but we kind of loved being with each other um, during that period, even though it was hard socially otherwise. Um, honey, do you have anything to say about, you know? Yeah, in, ter in terms of comfort, part of it too is that we've created a home that has in it um, uh, things that we love, you know, on the on things that we'd like things. I, I don't like to be hanging out with things all the time. But um, when we've gone places and picked up, you know, beautiful sarongs or, or, or whatever, the, what we surround ourselves with is beautiful and also has memories attached to it. So I'm just and not 20, thinking. 23 bookcases. And we have 23 bookcases. <laughs> We're both, our joke is that if we could get married again, we get married in a library. We both love, <laughs> we both love books, but we also, also have very similar tastes in in, in certain kinds of things. And Daniel also is a storyteller. He has a storyteller amongst all kinds of different books. I love what's on his bookshelf. And we constant, so we use, so we, and then Daniel's a musician. So there's musical instruments all around the house. Um, so it's like our house is kind of like, it's kind of like a playground of, of wonderful, I like candles and everyone. Well, that's the other thing. Like in the morning I get up and the joke is I sweep the Zendo. So we live in a, in a, in a flat with its open floor plan. So I get up when the sun is rising and I sweep and do the dishes. We put on music and light candles and we both love this kind of stuff together, you know, and then we start kind of, we both exercise. We're older. We have to, we both do our physical therapy exercises together on the yoga mat. So we're just kind of, we're in kind of sync. Um, and we create an environment around us where, where all of this is comfort. You know, let me, let me say something if I can. Uh, another thing just hit me is, you know, I, I knew this ideally with young couples, one will work and have put the other person through school and then they'll turn around and do this. That's what we did. Like recently when I decided I wanted to move to Hawaii, 
uh, many years ago, but Margie just wasn't there. And so I, you know, explored, I set things up. I even got licensed before even moving here, not knowing if she'll ever want to move. But circumstances in our life changed so that we did move. Once I got here, she had to provide some money and support while I'm setting up a practice. Uh, then she moved here. And after a while, now I'm kind of doing that. I'm doing, I'm the major breadwinner while she's going through graduate school. And it's just, you know, it's not like, well, it's your turn now. It's like, no, it's not quid pro quo. It's just, it just feels right. This is just the right moment. And so goody, I get to to do that for you. And, and so that's a very comforting thing to know. We have someone we can lean on when we have uh, something we really need. I really needed to move here and she was willing to do it. Now she, she loves it here. Right. Yeah. It took 12 years. <laughs> but the other thing is that part of being in a relationship is realizing that um, you're also in a dialogue and you can, it's okay to give it time and space to work itself through. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so we would come to Hawaii every once in a while and kind of, you know, try and, and, and discover and imagine what it might be if Daniel set a practice up, figure out what I'm going to do with my career. You know, it was like, for me, it was a big, big change and it caused a lot of heartache when I got here and lost my career actually. But then I rediscovered something else going back to school, which has been a total godsend. And that's the other piece of advice. And it's more advice from people that are older, even though we both feel like we're in our twenties, we're not, but because <laughs> we've been through some amount of life, the idea is to realize that everything's constantly evolving. And um, if you're, if you're, if you're with somebody that you trust and can provide comfort to, and love, there's always going to be space to create an opportunity that's going to work. The idea is just to be patient and also, and, and um, stay aware. Mm -hmm. um, but it turned out that this was the best thing for me to do. It was very hard to leave the San Francisco Bay Area for a lot of reasons, but this has been a fabulous move for me. And I'm really deeply grateful to be here in Hawaii um, with everyone. So with the community here, so it worked. Well, that sort of brings me to my final question because we're getting a little short on time. And I told uh, Margie and Daniel that, that I would be asking this because a lot of people in our audience don't find it quite as easy as Daniel and Margie do with their, uh, their relationships. And Margie's already given us uh, some ideas about, you know, how to come closer together and how to help each other and support each other. Uh, but that's a lot easier said than done. And, um, uh, for those people out there who are still having a hard time uh, adjusting to marriage or a partnership and uh, this this living with each other day after day, uh, could you offer some uh, some advice on how to how to do that very difficult thing? Uh, you've certainly given us an example of the two of you, but any ideas that you would have for people out in the television audience? Honey, you want to go first? Yeah, I mean, part of it, both of us have been with people where it was not a match. So I know what that's like for all of you out there who would really love to have a more mutual relationship, but it just doesn't feel like. Um, my, my thought is, in our situation emotionally, even though we're very different people, it's a match for us. But the way that we support our capacity to stay like this is by in very in very small ways always always being appreciative of each other of whatever it is that that we that we're loving in that moment to say it out loud in fact there's this research <laughs> that shows the couples that 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 appreciate each other in some physical or 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 through their through their words five times i think a day do better is that right daniel doing five five uh a five to one ratio between positive connection and negative right negative connections. yeah so the idea is that i mean this is true actually in, in any relationship in one's life is that the more you engage with what works the more you get back um opportunities to for, for to, to do well whether it's friends or at work or at home and so the idea is if you engage with what's wrong then you'll get that back and so the idea is you want to try and, and, and create a shift in any kind of relationship, um, try and authentically 
uh, validate what's working and what you love and bring yourself to it. And that helps create an opening. That's all. And then you also, you also feel the, the, the goodness in yourself, which some kind, sometimes can help your ability to, um, to go out and advocate for yourself to get what you need, to ask what you need from your partner, you know, because you feel good about yourself, good enough to do it. And again, for people that are in relationships that are absolutely not working, though if you've tried as much as you can, you might need to consider shifting out of them in some way. But for those that are still in relationships that may have something there, what works for me, uh, and I mean, I, you can tell like we're pretty cushy for each other and just totally yeah. appreciative. But I have been in some very uncomfortable relationships and Margie is so different from that. And we've made something that's very different, uh, myself uh, being a different kind of person. So a sense of gratitude, you know, that in my older age, yes. 50, if that's older, uh, I never thought I would meet it. I, I said, that's it. I give up. But, you know, I know people that met each other in their 70s. So it doesn't matter the age. But I, I just felt and feel every day an incredible level of gratitude that she's in my life and, and that we've created this life together and um, to keep working with each other. Even when we have those those moments that, that happen, uh, we always come back after we calm our amygdala down. <laughs> we'll pull our brain down a little bit and we'll come back and, and then we can talk more reasonably about something even if it's with with energy it's still we can come to a compromise and that's for me what what relationship is being able to communicate and then make agreements and keep them you know i just really appreciate you guys sharing all this one of the things that really uh i picked up immediately when margie said it and when you just mention it to Daniel is making sure that you tell the other person that you talk to the other person about this. I just watched uh, the movie Ghost the other night and uh, the wow. uh, the couple together, Patrick Swayze, uh, could never tell Demi Moore that he loved her. Uh, she would say, I love you. And he would say, ditto. And uh, it was one of the most telling things in movies uh, that told us how difficult it is to say some things. And that is so important in a marriage. And that's one thing that I really admire about both of you is you're always telling each other how much you care and demonstrating how much you care. And if people in the audience could do that, I think it would solve or make things a lot easier than what it may be now. But uh, let me thank you again, because we are really uh, short of time. I'm looking at the minus number starting up now. So <laughs> Danny and Margie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Much appreciated. And thanks point. to all the people at uh, Think Tech Hawaii, uh, Michael and Jay and Haley and Carol and everybody. And thanks to you in the audience who's tuned in to us on our close to Valentine's Day and uh, in relationships. So, um, and we hope you'll uh, come in in a couple of weeks. And when we do our next show, our next show is going to take us north uh, and it's going to be on the joy of Canada, which I think you'll all enjoy. So we'll see you then. Aloha. Thank you.